Activision Blizzard continues to face a reckoning that was a long time coming for the company after the DFEH issued a class action lawsuit that has exposed an awful culture within the company that has enabled widespread harassment, misconduct, abuse, and discrimination. And as all this plays out, we have seen Activision Blizzard depart with certain senior developers and senior officers within the company. We recently saw Blizzard's head of HR, Jesse Meschuk, leave the company on August 3rd, 2021. And HR being one of those disastrous departments within Activision Blizzard, a department that's, you know, allegedly intended to protect the human beings in the company as, you know, human resource. Instead, what they've done is protect the company by shielding abusers, by enabling abusers, by befriending abusers, and by housing abusers. The bigger story, though, of course, was the departure of former Blizzard president J. Allen Brack, who provided an awful statement in response to all this, where he blew smoke up his own ass and tried to make himself look good and tried to save face, but was ultimately unsuccessful. And the departure of all of these folks is good news, but that's not to say we shouldn't consider the fact that the executives who are at the really tip top of the pyramid of the Activision Blizzard organization have yet to face any consequences, have yet to accept any culpability or accountability, especially Fran Townsend, who sent those awful statements, and Bobby Kotick, who is the CEO of the entire organization and who's let all of this slide. So as a result of all of this, we've seen protests on all fronts, really, sponsors have been pulling out left and right. We have seen investors protest in their own way by issuing their own class action lawsuit over a lack of disclosures over the two-year-long DFEH investigation and all of the harassment allegations. The investment group SOC has even recently called out Activision Blizzard's inadequate promises and their inadequate initiatives to quelch the awful work culture that continues to permeate the company. We have seen employees engage in walkouts and Activision Blizzard try to respond, but their responses have proven inadequate, not fulfilling the demands of employees who are saying, you're going to meet us full way now, we're not going to meet you halfway here, we want our demands met and we'll continue to protest. Blizzard employees also protested Bobby Kotick's hiring of a law firm going by the name Wilmer Hale, which is in reality a union busting firm that has been known to defend companies over the employees and the human beings. Developers also continue to speak out to media outlets with the most recent report from August 6, 2021, involving over 50 former and current Blizzard developers who spoke out, and I shared all of this in a previous video, so be sure to check that out. But today, I'd like to talk about additional departures from Activision Blizzard. We are seeing more perpetrators being ousted, which certainly isn't insignificant. We do need senior developers in positions of power who have abused their power ousted from the company. And next up on the list, alongside J. Allen Brack and Meschuk, the head of or the former head of HR, we've got Diablo 4 game director Luis Barriga, lead designer Jesse McCree, and World of Warcraft designer Jonathan LaCraft who were let go from Blizzard on Wednesday, two sources with knowledge of the move told Kotaku. And these are pretty prominent folks within Blizzard. Luis Barriga has been sort of one of the faces of Diablo 4. Jesse McCree needs no introduction. He was prominent enough within the company that one of the Overwatch characters was named after him, the cowboy, Jesse McCree. And finally, Jonathan LaCraft is a longtime veteran of Blizzard who's been with the company well over a decade. Sources who relay this to Kotaku noted how the three developers' names are no longer visible in Blizzard's internal directory or Slack, which means they're no longer a part of the company. Activision Blizzard did not give a reason for the departure, and this is an important aspect to this whole story, how Activision Blizzard is quietly letting go of this individuals and not calling out what they did wrong, not calling out how J. Allen Brack enabled all of this stuff, not calling out the head of HR and how they didn't fulfill their duty of protecting employees. Alex Afrasiabi was 
quietly let go back in 2020 without any public disclosures about his awful, awful behavior. And now these three are being protected by the company so that the company can defend itself. They don't want to actually say exactly why they had to let go of these individuals. They won't actually talk about the abusive and the inappropriate ways that they've engaged within the company. At the end of the day, these are sacrificial lambs. These are scapegoats. People Activision Blizzard are using to seem like they're being proactive and are taking this very seriously. But this is all about cleaning house, saving face, and doing PR damage control. Not about taking any form of accountability. It's not about calling out the issues and trying to further the industry. It's all about protecting the company. And among these three developers, two of them are known to be pictured in the whole Cosby suite debacle. Jesse McCree, the namesake for Overwatch's beloved cowboy fighter, is one of several current and former Blizzard developers who appeared in the image of the BlizzCon 2013 Cosby suite. And this is alongside Jonathan LaCraft, who is also pictured in the suite. This is the infamous hotel suite that belonged to Alex Afrasiabi, which was used to bait and lure women in order to inappropriately seduce them. Now, interestingly enough, Corey Stockton, currently a lead game designer at Blizzard, while he is pictured in the Cosby suite, he wasn't completely let go. He was put on leave last week, but appears to remain with the company, so it seems to be more of a temporary suspension for Corey Stockton, whereas the other three listed here, Luis Barriga, Jesse McCree, and Jonathan LaCraft, They've been let go from the company entirely, completely. Now, as a result of all this, among the protests we're seeing from the Overwatch community in particular is demanding that Jesse McCree's name be changed within the game. And the thing is, there's a possibility that might happen given Blizzard's commitment to change in-game content that is inappropriate. World of Warcraft in particular has already taken steps to that effect by removing certain inappropriate references that they didn't specify exactly, but likely is referring to Alex Afrasiabi in particular. His name is referenced throughout World of Warcraft here and there, and those NPCs' names are either being changed or the NPCs are being removed. You can see right here, screenshotted in this Kotaku article, Field Marshal Afrasiabi, and then another one is Lord Afrasastras. And so with that happening in World of Warcraft, people are curious as to whether something similar will happen with McCree. Some fans are suggesting maybe they can make it so the character announces that McCree, Jesse McCree, wasn't his real name and that it's something else, or I don't know. I'm sure there are ways to do it if Blizzard really intends to do it, but uh, whether it'll happen or not is up for speculation, but it is one of the things that fans are demanding as, you know, Overwatch, this game about the world needing more heroes, having one of its characters be in reference and in glorification of a developer who's been discovered, or at least now by the public, to be abusive and to have engaged in inappropriate behavior and discriminatory behavior. Like, that's just awkward. That's just the bad look. Though, again, whether Blizzard will actually do this or not remains to be seen whether the outcries from the community to change his name are loud enough for Blizzard to do something about this remains to be seen, though we are seeing some forms of protests as far as his name goes in the form of things like Overwatch League casters no longer saying his name. According to this latest Kotaku article, Overwatch League casters Brennan Brenhook and Josh Sideshow Wilkinson appear to avoid saying McCree's name during matches instead saying the cowboy, whereas normally they would very clearly and succinctly say McCree. And this was noticed by other fellow casters like Mitch Uber Leslie, who actually tweeted out that he thought this was a good idea. And given that Bobby Kotick promised in his public damage control PR statement that he'd be striving to ensure their in-game changes, how they've heard input from employees and player communities that some of our in-game content is inappropriate and how they're removing that content or changing that content. Given this statement, maybe there is going to be enough of a push for Jesse McCree's name to be changed to something more unique, something less referential to 
uh, a villainous entity. So that's the latest on everything surrounding the ensuing Activision Blizzard debacle. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the latest senior departures from Blizzard and what your take is on Jesse McCree, the character in Overwatch, and his name still referencing the now former Blizzard developer who's been ousted for engaging in inappropriate behavior. Share your thoughts below, and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.